everyone. It's time for Children's Corner. I hope that you had a wonderful week. Before we get started, close your eyes and bow your head for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I bow in your presence. I ask you to bless us and forgive our sins. I would ask you to bless the children's ministry and the youth ministry. Thank you for letting us have the opportunity to send our videos out to the world so they can know your will. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you for the prayer. Now it's time for us to sing along with Seti and Billy. Please stand up and sing along. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Wherever you are, get up on your feet, clap your hands, and sing along with us. Our Father, it starts in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our kingdoms come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. about the part of the Lord's Prayer that says, lead us not into temptation, but we didn't finish the rest of the sentence. So today we are going to talk about the rest of the sentence, which says, but deliver us from the evil one. The title of our story is, I can pay my debt. Guess what I did yesterday, Bob asked Danny. I don't know. What did you do? Danny asked. I had my first driving lesson in a real car, Bob replied. You should have seen me behind the steering wheel. I'm a natural. In a couple of months, I will be the best driver in town. Wow, Danny replied. That is so cool. I have my permit, but haven't had any real lessons yet. I can't wait to get started. I bet I will be a better driver than you. You wish. I'm already a good driver, Bob said. I'm only taking these lessons because I have to. But I bet I could pass the driving test tomorrow if I wanted to. I bet you could, Danny joked. <laughs> if the test was in an empty parking lot. When are you going to start lessons anyway, Bob asked. Danny replied, I'm not going to driving school. My dad is going to teach me when he has time, but he has been pretty busy at work lately. But I'm sure before the summer ends, he will find some time to practice with me. Well, you know, after each of my lessons, I could teach you what I learn, Bob offered. That way, we can learn together and get our licenses together. Uh, thanks for the offer, but, uh, I'm not ready to die yet, my friend. I think I will wait for my dad, Danny replied. Besides, I already know everything in the driver's manual. All I need now is to practice on a real car and I will be ready to go. We would practice in a real car, Bob said. We can practice on my dad's car. Your dad's car? Danny screamed. Are you kidding? Your dad would lock you up in your room for the rest of your life. You know how he gets. No, he wouldn't, Bob insisted. Besides, he's let me drive it before. 
Really? Danny asks. Yeah, we were in the garage and he gave me the keys and let me drive one of the cars out of the driveway all by myself, Bob said proudly. Wow, Danny marveled. You see, Bob said, I can teach you everything I know. Danny still wasn't sold on the idea of driving with Bob, but out of curiosity, he went into the garage with his buddy, wondering what it would be like to finally sit behind the steering wheel. As luck would have it, Bob's dad was not home, and one of the cars was just sitting there begging to be driven. Come on in, Bob said as he unlocked the car doors. Can I sit in the driver's seat? Danny asked. Sure, Bob replied. I will tell you what to do, just like a real teacher. Bob continued to explain all of the finer points of driving to his friend. As Danny released the brakes, the car started moving out of the garage. He then tried to press the brakes, but instead he pressed the gas pedal. The car unexpectedly launched forward and Danny quickly pressed the brake as the car screeched to a stop but not before reaching the mailbox post at the end of the driveway. Danny put the car in park, and they both rushed out to see if there was any damage. With their hearts beating out of their chest, they examined where the bumper touched the mailbox post. Thankfully, there was only a very small pink scratch on the side of the bumper. It was so small, you would have to look closely to see it. Do you think your dad will notice it? Danny asked. I don't know, but I'm not going to wait around to find out, Bob said. Let's hurry up and put the car back in the garage. Just as Danny was about to get in the, in the car, his dad pulled up. He could not believe what he was seeing. I must be dreaming, he thought. He saw Bob and Danny frozen in the driveway and his car. Oh, man, he could not believe his eyes. He rushed out of his car screaming, what did you do? What did you do? Who told you you could drive my car? He went on and on screaming at the boys for several minutes. He looked at Bob and said, you're going to pay for this. I'm going to take that permit from you and cancel your driving lessons. You are never going to drive again. I can't believe you crashed my car. Bob said, but dad, it wasn't my fault. I was teaching Danny... Uh, and he... Danny did this? Bob's dad interrupted. I told you this boy was trouble, and you keep on hanging out with him. I told you, but you don't listen. Before either of the boys could get another word out, his anger turned towards Danny. I'm going to call the police for you, young man. You are going to jail today. Danny was so scared. Please, sir, Danny begged. Please don't call the police. I can work and pay for the damages. Please, please, please. I promise this will never happen again. I don't want to get in trouble. The damage is not even that bad. I can pay for it, he continued. What do you mean the damage is not that bad? I have to replace the whole bumper. Do you know how much the bumper of a car costs? Bob's dad asked. It's either I call the police or I call your dad and have him pay for it. Please don't call my dad, Danny insisted as he started sobbing. I will do anything. I can pay for it. I promise. Bob watched as Danny begged for mercy. He felt bad for blaming Danny, but he knew that he didn't want his dad's anger to be on him, so he didn't say anything. All right, young men, Bob's dad said. I will not call your dad nor the police. But since I have to pay for the car to be repaired, you will have to work for me with no pay until you have worked off the cost of the repairs. Every Sunday morning, you need to be here exactly at 9 o'clock to start working. If you skip one day, I will call your dad and I will make sure that you never drive again for the rest of your life. Is that clear? He shouted. Yes, Mr. Smith, Danny replied. I will be here at 9 o'clock. Danny wiped his eyes and went home. The very next Sunday morning, Danny woke up and got ready to head to work. Where are you going, son? His dad asked. Oh, I forget to tell you. Mr. Smith, Bob's dad, give me a part-time job on Sundays, he replied. 
Oh, that's great, his dad said. Have fun at work. Just make sure you don't waste all the money when you get paid, okay? Uh, sure, Danny replied as he left the house and made his way to his quote-unquote job. Danny's job for the day was to mow the lawn, pull out weeds from the flower bed, and wash both of the cars, including the one that he, well, sort of drove. Bob watched Danny work from his bedroom window. He wanted to help, but his dad forbid him from helping Danny. So Danny worked all by himself until he finished all the chores that Mr. Smith gave him. By the time Danny got home, he was completely exhausted. He dragged himself to the shower, ate dinner, then went straight to bed. This became his new routine Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. This is definitely not how I was planning on spending my summer Sundays, Danny thought. But he knew that it was better than going to jail or getting in trouble with his dad. One Sunday, as he was washing the car, Danny realized the tiny scratch from the accident was still on the front bumper. Bob's dad never actually fixed the car. So, he started thinking, if the car was not fixed, how will I pay off my debt? So, he went to ask, um, excuse me, Mr. Smith, how many more Sundays do I have to work for you? Mr. Smith replied in his usual grumpy voice, After you've worked off your debt, I will let you know. Fearing that he could make things worse, Danny continued his work, then went home. When he got home, his dad saw that there was something bothering his son. He had a hunch that it had something to do with his Sunday job. How much money have you saved since you started working? Danny's dad asked. Well... I haven't saved anything yet, Danny replied. What do you mean you haven't saved anything? Have you been spending your money, his dad asked. Well, not exactly. Danny tried to hide his emotions, but as his dad asked more questions about his so-called job, tears started pouring down his face. Danny knew that Mr. Smith's punishment was not fair, but he really didn't want to admit what happened to his dad. At the same time, he also knew that if there was anyone who could help him out of this mess, it would be his dad. So, with tears in his eyes, Danny said, I'm sorry, Dad. I really messed up. He continued to explain to his dad everything that happened. He told his dad about the damage to Mr. Smith's car and how he agreed to work without getting paid to cover the cost of repairing the car because he was afraid of going to jail. As Danny's dad listened to his son explain what happened, he was sad and angry. He was disappointed to hear what Danny did. He was angry at the fact that Mr. Smith's took advantage of his son's mistake instead of talking to his parents to resolve the problem. Without saying anything else, Danny's dad said, let's go settle the debt with Mr. Smith. When they got to the house, Danny's dad rang the bell. When Mr. Smith opened the door, Danny's dad handed him a closed envelope. What is this? Mr. Smith asked. Danny's dad replied, this is a check for $250. That should cover the cost of repainting your car bumper. If you ever come near my son again, I will be the one calling the police. And then they left. As they were walking home, Danny said, Dad, I'm confused. I worked all of these days without getting paid. Why did you pay him? His dad replied, Paying the debt is my way of making sure that there is nothing that Mr. Smith can hold over you. As long as the debt is not settled, he could still consider that you owe him. I just want to make sure that you are free from the control of this mean man. I also hope that you learned your lesson. You made a mistake which could have had some terrible consequences. But I am your father, and regardless of what happens, how you think I will react? You should have come to me. My job is to protect you and help you learn from your mistakes. I'm sure this will not be your last mistake, but I will always love you and nothing is going to change that. That being said, you're grounded. The end. 
One of the reasons that Jesus taught us to ask the Father to lead us away from temptations is because he knows that when we fall into temptations and commit sin, the devil will try to take advantage of our mistakes to make us his prisoners. By praying, deliver us from the evil one, it means that we know that the only person with the power to deliver us from the chains of the devil is God. In our story, Danny made a mistake. He tried his best to pay off the debt without going to his father for help. Even though he did everything that was asked of him to be free, the mean man, Mr. Smith, still found a way to manipulate the situation to keep him as a prisoner. Only when his dad got involved was he able to find freedom from the mean Mr. Smith. The devil is always waiting for us to make mistakes so that he can turn us into his prisoners. He can turn us into prisoners by making us addicted to the sin or by making us feel guilty even after asking for forgiveness or by making us run away from God out of shame. Boys and girls, I want you to always remember that no matter what happens, God will always love you and he is always ready and willing to deliver you and me from the evil one. Amen. Our verse is found in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17. Let's say it together. Pray without stopping. Close your eyes and bow your head for prayer. Please repeat the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, bye-bye. See you next time.